Oh. How's the head? Well, uh, well, no more or less empty than usual, thanks. Well, I suppose you, you need an explanation. I mean, that's the least I can do. Uh, oh, no, wait, I think I've got it. Tell me. Well, Darren Nesbitt guest character, whose name I've forgotten, I'm going to guess that you've kidnapped me in your little plane because you've heard that today's episode on the randomizer is Talk Down, and that's the Protectors episode that you were in. Yes. Yes, of course, except uh, it's not the Protectors episode called Talk Down, it's, it's actually the Joe 90 episode called Talk Down. Soz? You don't get off that easy. No, no, honest. You see, episode titles that appear in more than one series have now been marked to that particular series. So it's definitely Joe today, not the Protectors, which means I'm afraid you've had a wasted trip. Well, this is where I leave you. You're jumping? But I can't fly this plane. You'll fly this plane. Good point. Happy landings. Oh, what a nice chap. Right, well, let's see about landing this thing, shall we? Uh, I'm sure after all these years watching Alan Carter in action, I can handle a little plane like this. Uh, oh. Well, um, here's Joe 90. Well, last week I prayed to the uh, big pink pixie in the sky at the very end of uh, King Dithers for something a bit more to my tastes this week, and thankfully the randomizer has come through for us in a big way with some more... Joe 90, hurrah! Which I'm, oh, I'm again still with this, particularly this and Captain Scarlet. It's just, oh, it looks so beautiful in HD. Um, this little um, airbase with all the model cars around it, it's just so pretty. 3.5, 3.7. So at this uh, experimental airbase where this uh, rather snazzy orange plane is being uh, put through its paces. Mark 4, leveling out. Well, I think the Air Chiefs will be most impressed. They ought to be, sir. That's the fastest run I've ever seen. And this this plane is a rather odd design because... Uh, that was great, Jim. Bring her in. It doesn't look too much like uh, the regular planes we've seen in other... Do you read me? Century 21 productions. It, it does look more like a spaceship. The man at the controls... I'm fine. Jim, um... I'm... I've forgotten the character's surname. I want to say Goddard, because it's the same puppet that played uh, Commodore Goddard in The Trap, but it's not It's not Jim Goddard. Confirm with the General that the show is next Friday at 1100 hours. Yes, sir. We'll find out. I'm, I'm sure we'll find out his surname soon. ...of the project. May I offer you my congratulations, sir? Oh, thank you. It's been a team effort, though. The reward of two years... You and me, a fine team. And, of course, you look at this uh, air, um, control tower here, and it looks... You can see so many reused props and uh, other control tower bits. I think there's a, a section of the uh, underwater base from Arctic Adventure just mounted on the wall. One of the scanners there. Is anything wrong? Do you read me, Jim? Well, Jim Grant, that's his name. He's in a bit of trouble. He's, uh... Come in! It looks as if he's out of control. Yeah, he's let go of the stick. If he doesn't pull out soon, he'll crash for certain. I don't know much about planes, but I know you need to be holding on to that little uh, stick thingy in order to, to stop it from... Plowing into the ground. Oh, this is such a gorgeous model, though. It's very long. Come in, Jim. You can't read you, but if you can hear this, eject. This poor puppet is, uh, is absolutely this? covered in sweat. You are going to crash. Eject. And some poor farmer has got the remains of a plane to clear up now. Just, just hearing those those opening notes, this this music, this show, I make no apology for how much I enjoy this, and uh, I'm sure that Jamie and Richard will be uh, rolling their eyes even now. But actually, although Joe was a, a should we say a very prominent figure on the randomizer for its first year, I think he actually only appeared once, possibly twice, for the whole of last year. So it's not like we've uh, We've seen too much of him lately on The Randomizer. And I know, I'm, I'm sure I've said this countless times, but this show, and particularly this opening, just plugs straight into such a happy place in my brain of... Oh, 
gosh, I don't even know how to begin to describe how happy this opening makes me. It really does send me just back to being a little kid watching it on the on um, BBC One Saturday mornings, back when I was. Oh, I suppose that would have been uh, when I was about nine years old too. Yeah, 94. I was born in 85, and I'm sure this was repeated in 94, so I was the same age as Joe. Um, hurrah, I suppose. You've heard about the F-116 crash, Sam? Sure, Chief. Do they know the cause yet? Not yet. It'll take a couple of weeks for the lab boys to report. But it's imperative the demonstration for the top brass scheduled for Friday goes ahead. Oh, um, I don't know if this is a a done thing with uh, with um, top it's faultless oh okay okay right i've spotted something there so in the first um when i first went ooh shane it was a close up of shane weston he had a pin in his tie we cut back to we cut to sam louver when we cut back to shane weston the pin in his tie was gone a little um just a little um oh the pin's back joe nighty the pin is back now right so um Okay, that's a... Why would that have been there? To, to keep the tie from, from flapping around? Was that was that a problem with the puppets? I don't know. That's very odd. I've never seen anything like that before. But yeah, go back and have a look for the, the little pin and Shane Weston's tie. The little green, uh, little green bobble on the end. Everything in the plane went dead. I held on as long as I could, but then I had to eject. Well, it obviously wasn't your fault. Must have been an electrical failure in the aircraft. It puts us in a real mess. You're right. But we've got to crack it, and before next Friday. So presumably they have another highly experimental plane on standby. Back and the mad rush means an assignment for Joe. How would you like to fly the F-116, Joe? The F-116, Uncle Sam? Yes, Joe, that's the code name the Air Force have given their latest fighter. The Air Force, Uncle Sam? That would really be something. You've flown Air Force bombers before, surely. Always use their own test pilots. Fighters. Why do they need Joe? It's a fair question, Mac. And one I'm not going to answer. I'm sh I'm, yeah, but by this point, I'm sure we've seen Joe fly like half a dozen planes. Foot. Grant's been with the project. But this one is quite spiffy. It's very orange. Of the F-116. The aircraft is due to be demonstrated on Friday morning. We want Joe to pilot it. Sounds straightforward enough. All we need is Jim Grant's brain pattern. I'm surprised the flight controller gave you press boys the go-ahead to come and see me. Oh, we'll keep the article pretty general. No classified information, just a brief description of the F-116 and some background stuff on you. How's the, um, photograph coming, Mac? Just a few more seconds. <laughs> Grant's worn his, uh, ugliest blue dressing gown with matching, um, um, lavender, um, lined pyjamas for this, uh, this photo shoot that's going to be Presumably shown all over the world, as far as he knows. Of course, we know that this is Max, Sam, and Joe getting the older brain pattern. That camera looks pretty ancient. Oh, it uh, still does its job, Mr. Grant. Nice to have met you, Mr. Grant. I hope to be a test pilot myself one day. Well, maybe in about 10 or 12 years, Joe. Maybe a lot sooner than he thinks. Like tomorrow morning. Pardon, Mr. Louver? Oh, nothing, Mr. Grant. I do, I do like that when the characters sort of speak to each other cryptically about things that other characters shouldn't know, but they're saying it right next to, to, to those characters. There's a Professor McLean with a caravan at the gate, sir. Let him in. He's bringing the pilot. In a caravan? I do wonder, actually, as well, if this is the same caravan that we saw being used in uh, Project 90, the one that the balloon was launched from. to WYN wave bands. I'll have to check that later. It probably isn't, I'm probably completely wrong, but never mind. Say he's our most special agent. On another a beautiful close-up on the cockpit of this F-116, you see all the panels and the, the, the lines and grooves on the, the hull. It's a gorgeous piece of uh, work from the effects team here. Ah, and here comes the general in a limo that, um, again, speaking of reused props, I wonder if this is the same limo that we saw under attack from the aliens in... Uh, in identified. I know much of that was a real limo, but the, the, the shot where it crashes through the wall and goes down the cliff and explodes. I wonder if that's the same limo. A great aircraft, the brain pattern of a top test pilot. It'll be easy. Oh, he didn't say nothing could go wrong, but uh, it'll be easy. It's pretty, uh, pretty ominous, considering we're not even halfway through here. The F-116, sir, is a hypersonic fighter 
capable of speeds in excess of 3,000 miles per hour. The engine develops... I have read the specifications. Let's just see it in action. I do love this, uh, this, this character of the general who... Uh, the relationship between him and the, uh, the control tower... Um, chief, I suppose, because the chief is so anxious to make such a good impression to, to to get the general to buy lots of these planes, and the general is like, "Yeah, I don't care. I've, you know, I've got ten inspection tours to get to today. Let's just get it over with." It's a really nice dynamic between these two, and uh, again, it's it's one of those things Joe Ninety did so well with its guest characters. And we, we've all we've all been in situations like that. We can all relate to it. But here, can't remember. Jim's having a no. bit of a flashback. Can't land. No, no, don't touch him. He's reliving the flight just before the crash. I can reach into his mind and see what he's dreaming, nurse. Can't remember landing procedure. I'd better phone the flight controller. He must have suffered some kind of mental blackout prior to landing. Wait a minute. That's why he crashed. Aha, so... This is the point where this episode goes from seemingly a, a rather routine Joe gets to fly another nifty plane episode to something a bit more... Um, a bit more unique and a bit more uh, related to the central core of the series, because... Oh, gosh, there's that, there's, that, there's that gorgeous control tower model again with all those lovely cars. Thank you. Important phone call? No, nothing that can't wait anyway. So there was a previous episode to this uh, called The Race, which was a dream episode where Mac um, recorded his own brain pattern, transferred it to Joe, then they both went to sleep, and the ex this, this was an experiment to see if they would dream the same dream. And um, rather than uh, um, experience a... Uh, slightly more adult dream that you might you know, an adult might dream um, Joe and Mac both dreamt the same dream that they were in a race against uh, an army truck and they were like, okay, good we have established that the big rat can not only transfer brain patterns but can also transfer subconscious um, thoughts and, and subconscious processes this is a big step forward and here we are revisiting that idea but not in a sort of, not in a positive way at all, because Jim Grant's mental block regarding uh, landing this plane has uh, unintentionally been transferred to Joe. Great, just great. What a display. He was really moving. What did you think, General? I think we might possibly be interested. Oh, thank you, sir. That's high Are praise from the General, who really doesn't answer. care. That was great, Joe. Return to the airfield and land. Okay, Sam. Out. Land. And this is one of the few times I think that the show kind of addresses the um. He's coming in too fast, sir. The slightly um unspoken in the show, but um longtime Anderson fans. Last time have sort of picked up on the uh, the underlying dark themes in Joe 90 over the years that um the base I do not know the landing procedure repeat that this this seemingly wonderful piece of technology that's allowed Joe to do so many wonderful things over the last 20 odd episodes here we are actually running into a flaw with the basic process of the series and I think this is a a fascinating idea and it's brilliant that they re they chose to um, revisit that What's theme from the race. Not being able to land. Now calm down, Mac. Who are you? Never mind that. What's going on up here? Mac. Mac, just so someone better tell. Do you realize this and more wonderful scenes of people yelling at each other. Mac, just take it easy. Don't moment. try and shut me up. I've got a perfect right. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. I think Again, I love it when people are yelling at each other in this show. It's always Rupert Davies, Keith Alexander, David Healy, just brilliant. It was from the hospital. Grant had a mental blackout during his last test flight. What? What sort of mental blackout? A loss of memory. Loss of memory? Oh, no! Has he recovered this uh, memory blank? According to the doctor, not yet. He still knows how to fly an aircraft, but has forgotten the landing procedure. This is terrible, Sam. It means that It Joe... means we're leaving, Mac. Come on. And of course, it, it, 
kind of runs into the um, whole, again, the slightly sinister way that WIN operates, with the way they accumulate these brain patterns without the knowledge of the people that they're taking them from, the, the knowledge or consent. It is like, you know, these. there was no reason for the um, airport controller to report this to these two, because they didn't know, he didn't know that they were going to essentially go and steal a copy of, of Jim Grant's brain. And it's... Um, it's just it's, it's just so so interesting and also kind of satisfying to see that just for once this underhand way they they go about um using joe has completely backfired on them remember how to land and because we recorded his brain pattern after the memory lapse neither can joe he's got to remember it's starting to sound like all this is a really bad idea We've got to see him. It's a matter of life and death. No, you can't. I've had instructions from the Air Force. Oh, that, doc that doctor puppet has a bald spot. Well, That's so sweet. The reporters. Oh, it's OK, Doctor. I feel fine now. now. Grant, we need your help. You've got to come with us to the airfield. Well, I'd like to help, but no, I don't think... Get up. You're coming with Ooh. us. Max got a gun. Have you gone mad? Don't argue. Just do as I say. Which he often pulled out at, uh, well, occasionally pulled out in serious situations. Never quite knew why he had a gun, but uh, there we go. I'm sure it's something to do with uh, it's something v vital to do with the big rat. And some leftover Thunderbirds music here, of course. Does anyone else find themselves sort of humming or whistling or singing along to the the incidental music? By the way, it's uh, it's something I do like to do. Obviously not during this, but oh, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Oh, I waffled over one of my favourite bits of um puppetry there when Sam tell, uh, tells Grant that he needs to talk down Joe Grant l thinks about it for a second and then looks back and he's like oh no I really can't that's just such a quick just a turn of the head and the eyes it's um now imagine it's you coming in. again so lifelike you're making your approach these puppets were I, I think they're always I've always loved these puppets you don't understand I can't think but um, I think in the early days of Captain Scarlet, they, they moved a bit clunkier, whereas here... That's my son up there! Whereas in, in Joe, they, they were a bit more realistic. Check speed. I also love that Grant hears that from Mac. That's my son, and he's like... It'll crash. I'm going with this. This is fine. Correct it! Oh, now Mac's pushing him. More brilliant puppetry stuff. Too high. Do something about it. Increase rate of descent to... I can't do it. I can't think. Oh, and again, more brilliant puppetry. Mac just slapped Grant across the face there with the back of his hand, and it looked really realistic. There's, I mean, this episode is the the finale of this episode isn't particularly action packed, but it is so worth it for the the realism of the puppetry and the the performances. I mean, Gary Files is doing a fantastic job here with Grant. And the puppetry, is, as well as really supporting it. Steady. The undercarriage isn't down. Take her up, Joe. Take her up. Full throttle. Oh, no. Oh, so close. So close to the ground. It was a, we very nearly needed an international rescue there with the elevator cars. I'm going to give it to you straight, Grant. Do you ever want to fly again? Yes. Yes. Just as soon as I've had a little rest. A couple of months, maybe. Listen. I'll still be here if I if I take a few months off and come back later. Joe will still be circling around, right? And finally, as a defense mechanism, your mind has blanked out this area of fear. If you don't beat it now, you never will. You'll never fly again. And again, for those who 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 look at Joe and think, um, again, what other Super Marionation episode deals with with um, mental blocks due to fear? You know suppressed traumas it's like this show can be so grown up at times it's it's oh it's wonderful it's wonderful commence final approach i am going to talk you down give me your flight details every 20 seconds again the the f116 it does look so much like a spacecraft and of course it did eventually become one in uh, in Doctor Who, no less. Uh, this was among the the um, various um, models and props that um, were were given over to the BBC, and the F one one six appears relatively un unaltered 
in Colony in Space. It's the IMC spaceship in Colony in Space, which is quite fun. Nine miles from touchdown. Reduce airspeed. Steady. Keep her nose up. Of course, now Grant's sort of um, back in the groove of getting uh, getting the plane down safe. It's there's not much tension to this now. Well, we haven't even got any uh, any music. No um, sort of, you know, we're running out of runway type type uh, music, but again, I, th I think the puppetry is going too fast, and the performances are, are really selling it. Oh, he is going to run out of runway. Oh no, no, he turned right. He turned right at the last moment. I'll get over there. Make sure he's okay. Good old Joe. How do you feel, Jim? Oh, fine, fine. You're a great pilot, the best. Thanks. So, and, and I think, um, rarely this is an episode of Joe 90 that doesn't have a villain as such. Magnificent. I'd take 200. Huh? 200? 200. F-116s? F-116? No, I mean 200 of those weird-looking cars. Just oh, the controller looks very sad. Yes. Oh. 200 cars. And, shall we say... 50 F-116s? Yes, General. Now he's happy. Thank you, sir. And again, that's because the puppet's expression doesn't change. That's all done by the the puppeteering and the um, the movement of... Uh, the, the the performance of, uh, of David Healy. Anyway, Joe's on his way home safe and well. And that was... That was talk down, and that is... You know, it's not... It's not up there in... Um, my like favorite Joe 90 episodes but I think probably it is by and large one of the best ones because it does take a, a kind of brutally honest look at um, the way the big rat has been used up till now and says actually you know what this could go wrong with fairly horrif horrifying results um, pretty easily and uh, oh yeah as always fantastic performances from from the regulars um, I mean, not not so much from Len Jones, because although Joe is, you know, Joe is the one needing to be saved, he he doesn't really say much um, in this episode. He's uh, mostly we just see close-ups of him uh, looking a bit sweaty. But uh, you know, Keith Alexander, David Healy, Rupert Davies, and of course Gary Files playing uh, Jim Grant, as always, just uh, just wonderful. Oh, and I'm sure that we are going to. Um, now go back to Jamie and Richard going, oh, another Joe 90. You know what? I have five words for them. Ya boo, sucks to you. I don't care. I love Joe 90. I love this episode. I genuinely think it's one of the best Super Mario Nation episodes of all time.